I've never before used a fisheye lens. In fact, so lost and daunted was I by the prospect of using one that time and time again I delayed publishing this review. Prior to it arriving, I boned up on how to shoot a fisheye lens. Hints came from the general internet as well as from the comments section of Photogu Lounge. I'm still not confident that the examples I shot really get the picture across, but I hope I've learned a thing or two and that this review will help someone out there. Thanks to everyone for the advice and help, and thanks to TT Artisans for providing this sample. Whatever the limits of my abilities, the fun factor of using a fisheye lens is unlimited. This bad boy covers 180 degrees with a bright 2.8 maximum aperture. I'm sure loads of you out there know what it's like to shoot fisheye lenses. Move a little bit and the entire frame changes. Sag a shoulder slightly and the horizon bolts down. Because it covers 180 degrees and it does the bulbous fisheye thing, you have to remember a few things. Number one, mind your fingers and feet. It's easy to get either in the frame. Number two, if you don't want an object to distort like a magnifying glass held at arm's length, keep that object in the middle and small in the frame. Objects around it will bend, but the subject will remain largely planar. If you must, you can correct much of the fisheye business in post. Number three, Try a million different angles. What usually looks cool won't be as cool through a fisheye if shot normally. Go with unfamiliar angles and themes and shooting and, and you will uncover a totally new world. While Artisan's 35.2 fairly impressed me, the 11 2.8 is tighter still. Its focus ring turns on a hermetic helical over 90 degrees that, considering the viewing angle, is enough to achieve accurate focus from infinity down to 0.17 meters. In comparison to a classic Feuchtlander or Leica, the twisting action is positively sandy, but next to a number of 20-year-old Zeiss lenses, not to mention loads of lenses from China and Russia, it is perfectly acceptable. I can't go melty about this lens's aluminium barrel, or its cheap impact printed typography. The latter is par and the former is part of almost every cheap lens out there. That said, the barrel is solid and weighty and clicks firmly onto a mount like a more expensive lens. And while slightly sandy, its helical rotates easily enough that it won't cause the lens to wobble on the mount or on a quality adapter. The built-in hood sits like a lazy battlement above the glass and apart from a bit of barrel occlusion, appears to be the only thing that really gets in the way of the image on sensors larger than 35 by 24. Also being aluminium is strong enough to prop up the lens and camera. When shot at closest focus distance, this petal-shaped hood only barely occludes the frame of a GFX. But when out to infinity, where the internal lens elements sink back into the lens, that's when you're going to get a bit more occlusion. This lens is also easy to use. Its tight helical makes precise focusing a breeze, and despite focusing really close, focus travel from infinity down to 0.17 meters, a mere 90 degrees, is ample. A single spoke denotes the position of the aperture ring. I'm not enough of a video guy to be able to say so, but I can repeat what real video guys say. The clickless aperture is good for video. As a photo guy, I miss the clicks, which usually I count up or down from both ends to determine the approximate aperture by feel. But, you know, either way works. Unlike the 35-2, its flocked lens cap is solid on the barrel. Without enough force to break the NAP, it neither slips off nor rotates. The entire lens fits into the palm of a large hand, or the palm and then some of a metrosexual hand. And, as we will see later, it houses pretty good glass. The bad news begins when you mount it on an M. TT Artisans left out rangefinder coupling. If you have a film M or a CCD digital M, you'll have to guess your way to focus along hyperfocal lines. Even if your M does the live view or EVF thing, it renders the included framing finder pointless, not to mention relies on the digital M's terrible live view system. Yes, I understand that its field of view is too wide for the M's focus and framing window. 
yes, I understand that as a super wide angle fisheye lens, most things are in focus anyway. A lens made for a mount should support the most basic function set of that mount. I am disappointed. I no longer have the accessory EVF. I hated using it. The M's live view is pants, going too fast to jello, slowing way down in low light and getting in the way of other more important accessories. For instance, the framing viewfinder that is packed in with this lens. As a result, I find it much better to use on ground up mirrorless cameras. Because it covers a larger circle than full frame, I paired it most often with the GFX 50S and after that an X-T3, though I did my best to use it with an M10. As long as you can keep the horizon flat and keep focus in the center of the frame, this lens is sharp. The edge of the frame is fraught with softness, color smears and vignetting, but nothing that a little stopping down doesn't mostly fix. And to be honest, most of that is par for the course with any ultra wide angle lens. Like many good ultra wide angle lenses, its image circle is bigger than is intended for its format. If you could hack away its pedal hood, you'd net an extra 20 to 30% coverage. Even without going all Kevorkian on it, it is possible to cut out a good cinematic strip from the center of a GFX capture. This lens is contrasty and even at maximum magnification sharp. However, if you put a bit of extension under it, like using a helical adapter onto a regular mirrorless camera, it goes a bit soft when focused closer than MFD spec. Through a decent viewfinder or whilst using good focus aids, it is possible to keep up with slow moving objects. But no manner of sharpness or contrast will allow you, me, or anyone to quickly and reliably focus this lens in a repeatable fashion under all lights. Despite its relatively fast maximum aperture, it is too wide, showing little separation between adjacent or close subject elements through an EVF. Because of this, it is hard to suss what is in or out of focus. Focus peaking doesn't really help because the entire frame is going to light up red or blue or green or everything around the subject will do that. If you want to reliably focus this thing, you're going to have to do the magnify, reframe, a magnify back out thing. And even the floating magnified window on an X-T3 or GFX doesn't reveal enough separation to accurately focus. And this is only magnified when you're shooting something that moves. Proper rangefinder focusing would make all this simpler, at least on an M whose EVF and live view are stuttery messes. Other mirrorless cameras are far better, but not better enough to ensure reliable focus, speed and accuracy. Yes, zone focusing works fine. Yes, stopping down yields deep focus, but none of that is as accurate or as fast as focusing through a discrete rangefinder. At close focus distances and wide apertures, backgrounds can be fairly obliterated. This bokeh action begins from the center and flashes out like a firework exploding. Personally, I prefer bokeh styles that compress as they run toward the center, but I doubt anyone will buy this or any super wide angle lens or fisheye lens primarily for its bokeh. Still, what it throws out of focus looks good. As far as I can tell, this lens only barely breathes from far to close focus, which again, if I were a proper video guy, I might praise. And TT Artisan's coatings do a good job of keeping good contrast even when the lens is pointed into or near bright sunny objects. Yes, this lens will flare, but no, it won't wash out to oblivion. At acute angles with backlight, highlights bloom with smeared internal detail, but even then, quality images are a breeze to capture. As for my samples, I did the best I could with the limited knowledge of fisheye photography that I have. I even broke out the tripod and light painted the inside of my wife's car. It's a shame the outsides are a dirty workbench, a tarped up water pump, and some weeds. But anyway, check them out, I'd love to hear your feedback. In sum, I think this lens represents a great value for the dollar, and it's also fun to shoot. I still have no idea if my images do it justice, but I can say this, I had a heck of a good time shooting and I've not thought about the world in the same way since. If I were better at a hacksaw, 
and a little bit braver. I might even want to take off that pedal because gee whiz is it fun to put on a GFX and see just how far and wide you can go. TD Artisans, you've done a really good job. Thank you very much for the opportunity here. The only thing I would change about your lens is adding rangefinder coupling. Without that, it's really kind of pointless to use on an M camera. Now, I understand that the M mount is basically a universal mount for a whole bunch of mirrorless cameras, but it's also a famous mount upon which great lenses that work with it natively with rangefinder coupling exist in plenitude. If you're gonna make a great and fun lens like this that comes in an M mount, if you went just the extra distance, I don't know what extra it would cost, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, I have no idea. If you added rangefinder coupling, it would be a perfect lens to recommend as a bang for buck, heck of fun Leica M lens. But as it is, I can't recommend it for the Leica M. I can only recommend it for mirrorless cameras. Buy a hat, it's 20, 20 bucks. Uh, $10 for the hat and 10 bucks to ship it anywhere you are in the world. Also hit up my, my Patreon. Uh, you know where it is. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments.